Uh, shall we talk about the big news this morning? It's all over the newspapers. This is Lee Anderson. Mm. Uh, he's been suspended. This Ridiculous. happened as I was coming back from Doncaster. He's been suspended from the Conservative Party after refusing to apologise for comments aimed at Sadiq Khan. Now, he was doing an interview, and he is the Conservative MP for Ashfield. He was doing this interview, and he said Islamists had got control of the mayor of London. Now, Sadiq Khan obviously then refuted that. He described the remarks as pouring fuel on the fire of anti-Muslim hatred. And then the Conservative Party, there was this sort of silence whilst they tried to work mm -hmm. out what on earth they did about it. And now, they did the wrong thing as they always do. Well, so, so really interesting you say that. Why? Oh, OK, look, because we have a problem. We established it yesterday on the show, David, with people calling in, texting in. People are worried about Islam and the extremism. We saw the um, Shawcroft report this week, which actually said that we were not doing enough. We've seen um, MI5 saying that 75% of the threat is coming from Islamic Islam. The evidence is there. And yet prevent is nothing like that. 11%. Yeah. Yeah. So... We, we know that we're failing in dealing with it. The threat is there. We're scared to talk about it. We saw a vote overturned in a way that has never been done before this week in the Houses of Parliament when the Speaker decided to allow protocol to be broken because it was outdated. And why? Because there were mobs on our streets and the, the MPs were scared. So now Sadiq Khan is coming out talking about pouring fuel on anti-Muslim hatred. Mm. And what that will do and what it's designed to do is to shut down the conversation that we so desperately need to have. Uh, so, so that's a really important point, and I agree totally, because essentially he didn't... He, he said, and he clarified what he said, I, because he was asked, have Islamists taken control of this country? He said, no, they haven't, but I believe they've got control of Khan and they've got control of London. Now, Khan is well known. You and I spoke, you've done some research I into have. Khan and his associations. Perhaps you'd like to enlighten us. So his associations with people who are really part of this group that we're worried about go back a long way. So in 2003, he appeared at a conference alongside Sajil Abu Ibrahim, a member of the band Al Muhajirun. Mm. He was actually the chair of the Muslim Council of Britain. I didn't know that. No, exactly. And in his capacity as the chair, he argued in Parliament that the Muslim Brotherhood cleric, Dr Yusuf al Karadi, is not the extremist that he is painted as being. Now, there are many more examples of his links. The other one, I think, is with Cage, isn't it? His relationship with extremists ran so deep that he attended events for the jihadist rights group Cage and wrote a foreword for one of their report. Cage has since declared ISIS executioner Jihadi John to be a beautiful man on the BBC. Now, he defends all of this by saying he's a human rights lawyer, so he has to have these contacts. Now, this article, which is quite an interesting one, The Secret Life of Sadiq Khan, was written by Majid Nawaz, who is a Muslim, who was a jihadist extremist. He mm. was in a prison in Egypt, and Khan represented him. So he's very balanced in this article to say, look, he's not an extremist, but some of his friends are a very poor choice. And, and this, for me, goes back to the heart of the matter, because what happened happen to freedom of speech in this country. And I think there is a real problem. We talked about it yesterday. We talked about these radical elements in any religion, actually. And to counter all of that, we need to have an open, honest conversation about what is happening in this country. Well, and we've seen these demonstrations that are holding London to ransom. Exactly. So it is right that our parliamentarians discuss that. It is. And also, David, we are a Christian country. We're worried about our culture being, you know, denigrated and erased. And we we need to be able to have the conversation that when these people who are of a different religion, whatever it is, come to this country, should they not embrace... We're not saying get well, rid of your religion, yeah. practice it at home, in your mosques, but should you not embrace the culture that surrounds our main religion? So, so it's really fascinating what's happened. Labour's leapt on this, saying it's absolutely outrageous, Lee Anderson needs to go. Then you've got the Lib Dems, I was quite surprised by that. Daisy Cooper also wrote a really stinging rebuke over Lee Anderson. Yeah. Now, for me, the most interesting thing is my social media went bananas yeah. when this was announced. And I can tell you what people are thinking around yeah. the country. They're waking up and saying what has the Conservative Party done? Do you think this will damage them electorally? Yes, I think it will. But I think it's just another part of the jigsaw, isn't it? Where people are feeling completely out of touch with the party that they once felt 
supported their views. And I think that's what it's doing. I think people are scared, people are worried, and they want to have the conversation. And once again, I mean, even yesterday we saw we're streeting talking about mm. Islamophobia, you know, shutting down the conversation. The moment you put phobia on the end of any word, and we've seen it in many different debates, you try to shut so, down. So there was another very interesting comment that someone said, it's not Islamophobia because a phobia it's is an, an irrational fear. Mm -hmm. And But this is not an irrational fear. Yeah. It's actually looking at an emerging problem from a small minority of people mm -hmm. who are radicalised. Phobia is designed to weaponize language. To suppress people. Exactly. That's what it's so, so let me throw this out to you this morning. I know you feel very passionately about this, uh, given uh, all of the comments that are coming back to me. Do you think the Conservative Party was right to sack Lee Anderson? What happened to freedom of speech in this country? 